Hi guys, it's the GD Script Dude Andy here with a new video about what I'm doing with my digital uh, logic simulation project here based on Godot Engine. And here we are in the data manager. What I've been experimenting with is implementing a way to write code and run it on the simulated uh, CPU, the simulated computer, and what we have here is a data manager. Let's let's uh, run it. Let's open that scene. Here we go. It has various. It's a tabbed view, so we have the memory viewer. This is showing us what is in the first 256 bytes of the memory. So we have our address going from. 0 to 16 bytes across the the top and then 16 bytes going down and i'm just hearing a noisy motorbike outside anyway so this is going to be organized as pages of 256 bytes so if there are more pages available you can click here to go up and i'll show you that in a, a while and then to the right side there Oh, by the way, these are like hex uh, numbers, so they are up to FF, which is two hundred, like a eight bit, eight bit bytes of data for every location. And then on the right is a visualization for anything that is visible as a printable character, such as such as A to Z and numbers and so forth. Then in the next tab we have a disassembler which is showing you the, the address, the data and value and the source code. This will be shown up more clearly later in a minute. And then the assembler, this is where you can actually type in code. You can load it, you can save it and you can compile it. I'll show you that in a minute. It's pretty awesome. Then the help uh, tab just shows you, tells you about how, what, what is going on, what, what, is, what does it mean, what is each tab about, and it explains the syntax of entering code. Yeah, it looks very bland, doesn't it? Very white. This is using the, the BB code, but of the Godot, the, the rich text label feature. But it's it's just white. It's just either like bold or normal. So it needs a bit of color there, doesn't it? Like it, normally code is like syntax highlighted. But yeah, that's something to come up with in the future. Anyway, it's pretty. Maybe you're familiar with code, and then you know we got in GD script we got a hash to designate a comment line. So I've got copied the idea here and the label. Like there's like three three sections I suppose. There's usually a label with a co optional label. I should say anything in square brackets is an option. That would be a label, and then a colon to separate it from the the op code. Or is it op code? Is like a anyway a number for example, or uh, a b, and then a b c possibly. In the languages I'm implementing, they're very, very simple, like a sublec, which is subtract a from b, putting the value into b, and if it is zero or less than zero, then advance to the address referenced by c. So that's what that is, man. There's an optional comment after it. And uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail about how that works because it you know it needs some study about how to do programming in those these esoteric languages. And there is an, I'm supporting uh, I think it's two or three languages I forget now. The first one is Sublec, and then the other is even more minimal. Like it just says take the value referenced by the address a store it into address B, that's it, that's all it does. The other one, 
a sublink that is doing a test on the results is it less than or equal to zero which makes it more efficient in terms of the code how much code has to be written the other one seems like you can't program with that just take a and put it into b it seems like too simple but yes it can it can use lookup tables so for that reason there is uh, another like command here i've got like i decide a good way to do it is to what we want to do is make the program counter or the compiler address go to another place so i'm, I'm going to use the greater than symbol for that to go to that address and i'll show you in the example code so yeah we got yeah that's the documentation basically and then let's go to the assembler let's load test 2.asq i think that extension i made up it is a assembly language for sq like uh, sublic language for example open that and this is our source code and we have lines of source code and we have the long, the uh, the code. So you, this is just a normal editor page, you know. So you can edit the source code there. And we got various lines of code. We got a label and then the, the code one I mentioned. Then we got A to B, destination to destination, add and so on. Add means the destination address which regardless if if um, it's if it is zero or less than zero it will go to the it will go to the so sub lick means sub subtract and it's less than equal to then it means go to the I've forgotten now I think it means go to the uh, that address which is the equivalent of that label on the next line so it will go to the next line even so if that wasn't the case it's still going to go to the next line because that's the way that code works and we got some stuff here we just got a label with a, a value there of zero and we got a, in the code here we got labels for source destination and temp so we define these labels here at the line five temp is there and then sources then destination is there and like to because uh in other languages we need to have a, set up a table of values i've got this go to address 524 i'm using integers here rather than hex just for my laziness of implementing the compiler that will get jumped to 524 and then we'll see this when we compile it and then we got a colon because there's no label here just an example of entering a string with a space in abcdfg followed by a label of x and then just instead of uh, like labels we directly input code here we put a zero and then a zero and then a destination making it loop back to x so let's compile this and see what happens oh it jumped from the assembler tab to the disassembler disassembler tag tab i should say tab and here we are oh, we are at the program counter address zero highlighted in red and the address zero has oe which happens to be the destination look how cool that is the colors and we can hover over it so the destination this first line shows a whole line of source code and most of these programming languages i'm implementing take up three bytes per instruction so the first line shows the whole line of the source code the next line is just showing the values so the next one because start start is label so that has address of zero and then the next the actual 
opcode for this address is dest, which is uh, whatever value the label of destination has. So let's scan through here. We're going to find oh a label of destination there, which happens to have an address of OE, 0E. So we see 0E is inserted there for the destination. And the next byte of this, the next thing of this uh, source code is dest. So that's the next address it has the same thing OE because dest is pointing to the OE. And finally, the jump address is ADD. Nothing to do with attention deficit. No, this is uh, where we you can see there this source code ADD is the label for this line of code. So that address is 03. So the third one there, third argument is data value of 03. So we have OE for test, OE for test again, 03 for add. And then finally we get to the next line of code, which is labeled as ADD, and the code is source, source um, code into the temp, and then jump to next if it's less than or equal to zero. So that's going to be very confusing, I guess, but that is how it works, and so that is a uh, uh, compiled source code and if we go to the memory viewer we can see it is in there page zero we can see OE OE starting at the beginning beginning of the memory and the rest of the code there and let's go back to the disassembler dis notice the pages there remember we uh, okay assembler check that Look, we went to address 524. I purposely put that in as a test value because each page is 256 bytes. So the next page will be up to 512 bytes. And then the, this is going to be on the third page, which is page 02, because the pages are counted in from 0, 1, 2. So if we go there, we go page up see all these addresses and the data is zero and go up one more and we see the this kicking in where we've specified it to be at address 514 so we, we've got page two and oc so the actual address is 20c i think that is whatever 524 but i didn't uh, confirm it myself and oops, look at that. And we can like roll our middle mouse to scroll down to check out the code there. See this line of code X is the label corresponding to 14, address 14 on this page. And uh, we got 00X. And then, hey presto, it's got 214. See page 214 for its address. And then the memory viewer tracks what page we switch to, so you can you can see the. At least we should be able to see it. Let's go back again. I forget now what, what I'm doing. So uh, uh, looks look, look for the A that is in zero two zero D should say sixty one for the A. Two zero one. Yes, it does. There we go. Two zero one sixty four for the A. And if you're curious about the code, let's have a look. Here we go. Data Manager. We need to stop this running. And Data Manager kind of uh, responds to signals from these various windows, like he's got on a similar compile and switch to the tab. See, after we compiled the, the assembly code. Here, switch to tab one and then runs the compile and update feature of the disassembler and also it has to 
reset, you know, the, the, to start with, it may have just one page of memory, and then the assembler may take up more than that, more pages. So we, we run this set page, max, set max page there. Lots of stuff like that. Anyway, the interesting thing is probably the assembler code. Look at that. Yeah, we go to here and uh, scroll down a bit. Where are we? Oh, I'm in the wrong page. The assembler is on the disassembly, disassembler, like script. And uh, here it is. It runs compile, the compile function. And it does it in like two phases. The first one is to establish what the label address values. So we have to scan through the code and work out the addresses of all of the labels. And then uh, we get to this point where we set the address back to zero and then we do it again. But this time we actually compile the code with knowledge of what the 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 label values are so it's not tremendously complicated code but oh look at that it's still like hundreds of lines but yeah the compiler is quite simple and it's a general purpose one for the programming languages that we want to implement and the other stuff is oh the memory viewer is gonna like i use the Continuous updating for that one because uh, see is the uh, on timer uh, timeout update data. Yeah, because uh, it may be linked to the functionality of the underlying circuit whose memory chip is associated with this. Anyway, oh yeah, I should say that. Yeah, no, I, I've kind of done what I want to do with this. This um code and the assembler and dissembler and so forth and I'm going to go back to the roots of this project like where it simulates circuits and start implementing like challenges and gameplay even from the very first part where you just learn about binary numbers because I've kind of gone too far here because I, I don't actually know where I want to take it yet and so I'm going to halt on this development of the assembler, disassembler, and writing code and running programs. Because I got too far ahead of where it is going. So I'm going to go back to the beginning and create that kind of stuff. And then share like the downloads probably for the beta testers on some download page on the internet. So that's where I am now. And I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe. See you later, guys.